The subject of today's video will be Cronus, and Cronus. For those who are just listening, there are two different spellings of the name up on screen that refer to the two different deities. Now whenever I discuss Cronus, I generally refer to him as the Titan of Time and the Harvest, and the response I get quite often is, am I confusing the Titan Cronus with the primordial deity of the same name? And my answer is always the same, no, I'm not. But I can see why there is some confusion, so it's about time I made a video where I explain and clarify the differences and similarities between the two, or at least try to. So I guess we can start with what we already know, that one was a titan and the other a primordial. The real difference between the two comes in the religion itself. We know that over the years there were many different types of Greek religion, in different regions, and the primordial Cronus comes from Orphism, the religion of the Orphic Greeks. Their iteration of Greek mythology is quite similar, but they do have some differences in the details, as well as an entirely different idea as to how the world came to exist. To the Orphic people, Cronus was the primordial god of time. He was also a serpent with three heads, the head of a man, a bull, and a lion. But that's just weird and not too relevant to what we're discussing today. He was also the son of Phanes, the first deity to hatch from the cosmic egg, the first ruler of the universe, who would then pass the mantle down to his daughter Nyx, and in turn, her son Uranus. Definitely quite a different creation story than we're used to. To make things even more confusing, Cronus was sometimes equated to the Titan Ophion, the first Titan King, who the actual Titan Cronus wrestled off the throne, rather than taking the throne from his father Uranus. At times he was even referred to as Cronus Aeon, or just Aeon, so you can see how confusing this is all starting to get, and over the years the Greek and Roman poets seem to agree. The likes of Pindarus, Nonus, and Cicero saw Cronus the father of time and Cronus the father of Zeus as the same deity. The primordial iteration was essentially dissolved into the Titan, and he became the god of time and the harvest. What was once the primordial god of time was now referred to as Aeon, the personification of eternity. So when I and others refer to Cronus as the Titan of time, no. I am not confusing him with the primordial Cronus, because they essentially just became one deity when the Orphic tellings of Greek mythology were phased out and slowly replaced. Let's not forget that the oldest accounts of Greek myth that we have come from the Mycenaeans, and they believe Poseidon was the signature deity, the head of their pantheon. But no one really refers to him as the ruler of Olympus today because their ideas were taken and dissolved into newer iterations of the religion. If you are someone who distinguishes between the two, then surely you also prescribe to the Orphic idea that Eros was the primordial god of love and not the son of Aphrodite. Do you then just dismiss the whole story of Eros and Psyche, or do you believe that there are two Eroses, which again only serve to make things more confusing? Essentially what I'm trying to say is Greek mythology had many different phases of belief that over time were replaced by new ones, and if you start to cherry pick from different periods in time and try to put them together, you end up with one big incoherent mess. And Greek mythology to begin with in its most refined state is already an incoherent mess. So sometimes it is just easier to accept that over time beliefs did change, and as a result certain gods and goddesses disappeared or they were merged into something else. So in conclusion, is Cronus the Titan god of time? Yes. But there are also of course other deities associated with time, just as you have hundreds of deities associated with the sea or death, not just Poseidon or Hades. Neither idea is incorrect, it just comes down to what you believe. Hopefully my tiny chimp brain has been able to piece together some kind of coherent line of thought that you guys now understand, but maybe I've just confused you even more. I don't really know anymore. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.